Welcome to Playboy Magazine, July 1976. A very uh, patriotic cover here. Uh, our cover model is Cindy Wood. Um, Sarah Miles and Chris Christopherson in the sexiest pictorial ever. We've got the Playboy boat stable. Uh, Art Buckwald fingers our founding fathers. We've got the real Lily Tomlin stands up. And now Jane Marie Mansfield. If you are uh, of a certain generation or if you are a kind of diehard Playboy fan and you sort of um, know your playmates, you'll recognise that name and I'm sure you know who she is. But um, Happy Birthday America is the title at the bottom there. Got some Winston cigarettes. We have a Subaru there with its various models. Got the playbill. Always worth reading through if you're not familiar with the guests for the month. It gives you a little rundown on who some of them are and what they're doing in the magazine this month. Uh, cool Ray cigarettes. Got the contents. A Playboy interview with Carl Hess, a really interesting character. I actually really like him. Um, we've got Jane's Girl, which is a small pictorial with a lady who uh, you will know quite well. Um, we have the Declaration of Independence. This is our Playmate of the Month. Um, some other features stand out. There is some um, nice artwork in this issue, which we'll get to. We've got Minolta here, uh, the Loudmouth Portable 8-track player from General Electric. Um, we've got some more Volkswagen. This is the Dasher. Um, not a model that I'm familiar with. don't think it ever arrived in Europe. I'm not too sure. I don't think it um, came this way. Cigarette Market Bombshell. And we've got Dear Playboy Letters just here as well. Tabasco. Um, got some letters coming in there. Um, one of them just stands out that IRS is one of the greatest weapons we have against organized crime and we should be careful as to how far we limit its investigative powers. Um, you'll remember there was a feature about banning the IRS or removing it from power and there was actually something on Twitter that which I saw recently which was also about the IRS claiming that it should be uh, disbanded. Uh, so some more um, features on uh, tax returns and this is the feature that you'll see just over here Jim Davidson's punch out the IRS that was the one that was in April of this year of 1976 so worth heading back to take a look if you haven't seen it before the new Dodge Charger uh, once you've looked you are hooked I always like the car adverts in Playboy um, just because I'm a bit of a fan of American cars to be honest I like that iconic look um, got some JVC and some more, I think that's the Rolay um, camera. Just call cool anytime. Now it's easier than ever to subscribe to Playboy. Uh, I've got some Travel Light. Sorry, Travel Light, not empty. Slim Jims. Gordon's Gin. Playboy After Hours. We have l &Ms, some more cigarettes there. Uh, on the mark uh, is the title on the page on the left there. I grew the mustache because it was like, because it was like, I mean, you know, I'd have never because the coach didn't want it and all that jazz. So this is the uh, selection from this little article here. Um, not much stood out for me in the other parts. Um, just having a quick look at my notes here. Nothing around here. Um, the first beer came from Bavaria. The best one still does. That's Hofbrau beer there. So we've got some movies in this section. Um, so in Embryo, Rock Hudson plays a genetic scientist who runs over a pregnant dog, removes a fetus from the dying animal, injects it with magic serum, incubates it and becomes the surrogate parent of a full-grown snarling Doberman in a matter of days. Having accomplished this Frankensteinish miracle, Rock wants to try fooling around with human life uh, as mad movie doctors always do. I have to say that this film I've never um, heard of. Um, I assume some of you have because I know many of you are quite sort of uh, clued up on all the films from the 60s, 70s, 80s, in particular the horrors and the sci-fi. Um, Jeff Bridges gets a mention down there in the bottom left with, uh, uh, sorry, Jeff Bridges meets the Flying Nun and the Mute Muscleman in Stay Hungry, a nondescript movie based on a novel by uh, Charles Gaines. Um, we'll move on to the next section, X-Rated. Um, so... There's always a little feature on uh, X-rated movies. We have things like Sex in Cinema, uh, which explains all of the new kind of pornography that's appearing in various formats across America and elsewhere in the world as well. Got some music here. Um, yeah, nothing standing out for me here. Certainly not in my notes, but I know you big music lovers will have a look through that and recognize some names. I always like the Coppertone adverts. Um, whatever your kind of skin, there's a copper tone for you. Um, every, every, just they just look really good for some reason. Um, those copper tone adverts with the 
the way they're laid out with the different bikini colors and everyone looks tanned and slim and nice um they're, they're nice adverts quite simple as well you know i mean you see the adverts today and i've always said this there's this comparison with playboy where the more simple it is sometimes the more effective it is um today it would probably just be a bottle of the um suntan lotion or some sort of artistic thing where you don't actually get an idea of what the product is there's no description there's very little text everything now is very minimal back in the day in this era certainly and before you get quite big descriptions on the products uh, particularly the cars you get performance statistics and lots of other measurements about what you can get in them look at this pocket cb here just as an example new integrated circuit technology and major electronic breakthrough brings you the world's smallest citizens band transceiver so look at how much text is in there for an advert um, we've got Datsun's new front wheel drive F10. Again, look at the amount of detail in there about the construction, drivetrain, suspension, gearbox, etc. We've got Motorola, which is in car entertainment. Uh, Claremont Hotels, and obviously, if you ever want to look at any of these magazines in detail yourself, if you want to zoom in or take more time, you can subscribe to the Playboy magazine archive, about $100 a year, um, and that will get you access to the magazine archive, plus some Playboy TV and other things as well. So worth taking a look. Um, we've got Seagram's, and we've got some books here. Uh, I hear America Swinging, Little Brown is Peter DeVries' Celebration of Sex in the Midwest. Salem cigarettes, forbidden games. This is our selected short. Quite a new feature. Insights and outcries on matters large and small. Uh, forbidden words, and forbidden games by Gary uh, Wheels. There. Um, just a little bit stands out here, which I think I highlighted. The feminists perform a valuable service when they remind us how often sex is used to dominate or exploit others, make them objects to be possessed, traded, used in weird ego games. On the other hand, if sex is totally mysticized, sorry, demysticized, shred of all in its demonic side, made casual as a handshake, one loses to begin with Romeo and Juliet, a heavy price to pay. So there's some nice features in this month's issue, actually. Um, the last couple for me haven't been too great. You know, we've had some really good issues over the years, and I think just this period we're starting to see a bit of a transition. The, the, the content of the magazine is changing, the artwork's changing. There's a few things going on. The Playboy Advisor, um, it's got here. I live in an apartment with an apartment building with cardboard walls and floors. Consequently, I'm unable to play my stereo at full volume as God and Phil Spector intended. The volume control never goes past three on a scale of 10. To compensate for the lack of power, I usually turn on the loudness contour. The music seems louder or at least fuller. How does it work? Can I blow out a speaker if I turn up the volume with the loudness switched on? Probably not. When you listen to a stereo system that is being played uh, at less than concert hall volume, you tend not to hear low or high tones. The loudness contour boosts the bass and high treble responses at low volumes, thus producing a fuller sound. This reminds me of... um something I read about mp3 conversions and music in general um, it was saying that a lot of music today when you hear it appears to be very loud but when you turn it up or you turn it down it remains the same there's not much change it appears that the volume is changing but the actual substance of the music remains quite loud and there's something behind it that they do in music um, to make it stand out I think it's something to do with radio playback so if you want a song to kind of stand out, you kind of create this artificial sort of sound where it sounds louder and perhaps more fuller than it actually is. Something to read up on is something that I've um, read ages ago, and I'll probably find the link and put it in the description below once I get it. We have, actually there's one just on this page here. At a party recently, I noticed a man wearing an odd sterling silver ring on a chain around his neck. He explained that it was a cock ring worn around the penis it supposedly prolongs intercourse and stimulates the woman's clitoris he said that a girlfriend had given it to him as a love token can you provide further information and it says cock rings have been in existence for centuries ancient erotic paintings from china and japan show the devices in use obviously there's a bit more on that as well but i never noticed that i mean i've seen films from the 70s i've seen images and people did have these rings obviously particularly men had these rings around their neck um and now I kind of know why they had them, because they were a bit oversized a lot of the time. They didn't look like anything particularly decorative. 
but perhaps what's the, that's what they're all for. Um, what have we got here? A friend claims that sperm banks actually pay contributors. Is this true? The economy may be down, but I'm not. I could see capitalizing on a renewable resource. How do I go about it? And it says donors do receive payment. The average is around 20 to $25 per ejaculate, which is not bad for uh, piecework. It sure beats giving blood. Uh, you don't see sperm banks appealing for new counts on TV for a reason. I expect they were probably inundated. Playboy Forum here. And the Sportables. The Forum News Front. Um... Snuff movies is one of the topics. A letter in the March Playboy Forum mentions so-called snuff movies, films in which a participant is supposedly actually murdered. Shortly after reading that letter, I had noticed a column by John Camper, a television critic for the Chicago Daily News, about snuff movies. Camper wrote that the rumours about these movie films have already inspired two TV programmes. One just used the making of a snuff movie as a plot gimmick, but the other, an episode of Police Story, used the notion of snuff films as a basis for a sermon against pornography. So lots of topics to pick up on there. Got a few more ads. Nothing that stands out too much. Airbeds seem to feature quite regularly in Playboy. Something that you wouldn't kind of expect to be in there, but it does make an appearance. Cole Hess, a candid conversation with the former Goldwater advisor turned left winger who now pays no taxes, lives by barter and preaches red, white and blue anarchy. Um, it's kind of strange they sort of turn sort of um label him as a left winger because for me he sounds quite centrist says after i left goldwater i took up motorcycle racing went into the welding business was divorced by my wife became a tax resistor began living on barter remarried joined sds the usual the declaration of independence is so lucid we're afraid of it today it scares the hell out of every modern bureaucrat because it tells us there comes a time when we must stop taking orders um, which I think is quite prevalent. I've always found that people who don't like freedom um, are kind of afraid of like the maximum amount of freedom someone could have. They think it's kind of dangerous. They believe that control is needed. I'm not one of those people. Uh, if the Soviets ever invade the US, by the time the Red Army got here, it would be totally corrupted. They would be des deserting to open McDonald's franchises. The country, This country is irresistible. And I think that's true. A lot of people who move to the west and the u.s in particular from wherever they come whether they come from a communist country or elsewhere they eventually get involved in the kind of capitalist nature and just the sort of amount of opportunity there is in america i think changes people's opinions there's no doubt on that um just one of the captions here the notion that a few people are different and superior was horseshit in mon monarchical times and is horseshit today yeah, I mean, I don't think royalty are particularly any different, but um, there is kind of a system which provides some value. But again, I'm not really a royalist, but I can see the value in it. Um, this caption here is so sad. Women are used as trade goods in a political campaign. They are assigned like jets and lim limousines. So it's a good interview to read this one. I'm going to pick up a couple of um, Cole Hess articles. I'm going to print them out, have read through them. I'm going to see what publishing... Um, works there are for him as well Benson and Hedges <clears throat> poker a guaranteed income for life um, which is probably a bit of an exaggeration quite optimistic I guess um, a huge amount of text on that ad as well uh, I don't know who's going to read all that but I guess people did uh, Canadian Club The new Yamaha XS360 for people who appreciate sophisticated simplicity. Got the MG uh, Midget Special. Old granddad there. Some Heineken. And there's another little caption here, which I'll just read because I think it's quite relevant to today. I would argue in favour of Americans continuing ownership of weapons. If guns were outlawed, only the government would have guns, which is a common argument that you hear. Uh, Born on the 4th of July by Ron Kovich, an ex-Marine sergeant brings you as close to the searing horror that was Vietnam as you are likely to get. Um, obviously, Playboy being a huge proponent of um, you know, withdrawing from Vietnam very early on, Playboy has a history of um, always supporting veterans and being anti-war, so that's um, something I strongly believe in as well. I'm anti-war, 
Um, and I believe people who do go to war for just reasons should be um, protected far more than they are when they return. There's things that we can do. Edmund Karaz cartoon. Uh, I'm glad to see that you have changed your mind about my inflatable doll. Uh, this fire, sorry, the fire this time. Uh, Gil Scott Heron has been called the Black Bob Dylan. He doesn't appreciate it. This is personality by Vernon Gibbs. I don't know much about uh, Gil Scott Heron. I've got one article bookmarked, which I'm going to read to give myself a good rundown on his career and everything else. But um, I like the artwork on this one. Photography by Jane, sorry, by Dwight Hooker. Um, and this is Jane's girl. For years, Jane Marie Mansfield lived in the shadow of her famous mother. Now she's letting the sun shine in. So this is Jane Mansfield's daughter. Jane Mansfield being a prominent um, playmate, appearing in the February 1955 issue. So you can go back and take a look at her. Obviously a star in her own right, not just within Playboy. Um, so go and check that out. But here's her daughter's pictorial. And there's a nice little snap there of Jane Mansfield in her early days. So she passed away 1967, <clears throat> um, her mum. So we'll go through those. Give that a pause if you want to read any more of the text. Art Buckwald Special Commemorative Bicentennial Souvenir Album. Um, so there's a feature here from him. Perhaps one more for the historical people there and the ones interested in some satire as well. Excuse me, do you know who Lily Tomlin is? Uh, you could start by asking Ern Ernestine or Edith Ann, but they probably wouldn't know either. This is Personality by Louise Bernard Crow. Um So Lily Tomlin, as far as I'm aware, went on to do um, great things. She's um, still um, pretty famous today. Um, again, I haven't read too much into it. I haven't had time to dive into her history, but many of you will know who she is. So that's the great thing about Playboy. You can pick out little things, go and read them yourself and get down that rabbit hole and uh, expand your knowledge on the people that came before. Uh, our July Playmate discovers there's nothing wrong with uh, Painesville, Ohio, that leaving it won't cure. Declaration of Independence. Um, so nice um, Playmate for this month. <clears throat> Here she is. I've got the centerfold ready to show you as well. I've actually just forgotten the name of the playmate for this month. Why have I not noted that down? I haven't got it in my notes here. I will find it for you within here. Um, so this is Deborah Borkman. Um, so I think a nice set of photographs. Nice looking lady as well. I always like the black and white style with Playboy. I always think that those ones look pretty good. We've got the centerfold just here. I think that might have looked better as a black and white image, um, that photo. Not one of the best centerfold images, um, but okay. It's, it's all right. Playboy's party jokes. Um, we've got John Dempsey cartoon here. Caption, here Prince, right here boy. Ah oh, yes, right there Prince. Um, so let me just try and work this cartoon out because I haven't actually looked at this one in person. Still not sure what's going on here. But I'll come back to that one. Last one out. Fiction by David Ely. It was a sensational publicity stunt, but there was more than coconuts on that island. This is a fictional piece. Hot dog. Smile when you call it junk food. Partner this year. That's downright subversive. Food by Emmanuel Greenberg. I like the pin-up style on this uh, image. Illustration is by uh, Dennis Michael... Magditch, it looks like. So, not a name I'm familiar with, actually. I need to take a look at that. That's one I'll add to my notes, which I forgot to note down. Uh, City Shorts. So, a little pictorial here. Playboy's History of Assassination in America, Part 7. No Ends to the Madness by James McKinley. Uh, the, con the concluding chapter as, a, as of this bicentennial year to the nation's bitterest legacy, the killing of Robert Kennedy, the near-fatal shooting of George Wallace, and the attempts on Gerald Ford, which... You remember in the last issue, I think it was, we had Sarah Jane Moore who had admitted to trying to kill Gerald Ford, um, getting up quite close to shoot him and actually uh, using a gun that wasn't calibrated properly and she ended up missing. 
So uh, they're quite interested in the assassination article. So go back and give it a pause, take a look, or have a look on um There's various websites that document these, and they're all very good. So take a look. It's quite an interesting era of the amount of assassinations that were taking place. Buck Brown cartoon caption, we should work out a signal to let me know when the coast is clear, Betsy. You know, a flag or... Chris and Sarah, in a scene of electrifying, electrifying erotic intensity, Christopherson and Miles make love for the movie cameras and for Playboy. So, uh, yeah, pretty erotic, you know. Bit of imagery here. We've we've seen this before, um, that Playboy was gradually becoming more and more um, pornographic in, in its imaging. The Soul of Sarah, life explorer, consumer actress, and aspiring poet, Miss Miles is, to say the least, a singular. This is by Bruce Williamson. Quattadini, um cartoon, now it's everybody's, sorry, now it's everybody's into the sack. God, how I hate planned parties. The Playboy Boat Stable, Modern Living by Brock Yates. There's always been a bit of a history between, like, yachts and that kind of thing in um playboy and it's interesting that i don't think you have ever had a private yacht or sort of used yachts that often he was more of a man who sort of stayed at home but it's a feature that appears regularly in playboy and even some jets as well obviously we have the famous big bunny jet that um hugh hafner owned we've got from the forthcoming novel by harry cruz um this is a feast of snakes a Berenice Sweet didn't know what true love was. It took the boss rattler to show her. Illustration there by Richard F. Newton. Looking Good by David Platt. It's a fashion um, piece here. I like that suit on the right and the tie, actually. For some reason, I like that one. The image on the left actually reminds me of something out of like Scarface, that kind of... Uh, jacket and trousers there um we got roland b wilson with his cartoons <clears throat> terry and cigarettes little continuation here um cartoon just on the bottom left old Dan, premature ejaculation go back 10 spaces lose your turn and that's the adult game called orgy uh, we've got some brute there erickson cartoon what's more she's speaking into the wrong end of the phone Weekend Blues, and this is a, a Wii feature. And I did look into this the other day um, because someone on twi Twitter had posted something about their magazine collection. And when I asked them about Wii, they didn't have any copies. But it was actually um, a French, obviously a French magazine, and it was French um, created. It wasn't created by Playboy. Playboy bought basically the rights or the license to create their own version in the US. Um, but what's interesting is that the, the magazine is kind of competing with Playboy, so I'm not sure what Playboy's intention was, whether it th thought it could take more of the market just in general, maybe appeal to a slightly different audience from uh, Playboy itself, but um, I can't see that that would, would have been an idea at the time that would have worked. I mean, to have two companies competing side by side, particularly when both of them are pretty much in the pornographic era anyway, they're both going to be printing the same kind of things. Gay and Wilson cartoon. Of course, the place wouldn't seem so small if we weren't elephants. Very surreal. Uh, Gay and Wilson. Uh, bottom left cartoon. And it says, hey, I'm not through seducing you yet. Triumph TR7. On the scene, we've got Tony Bill, uh, script miner. Chevy Chase, uh, the fall guy. And Bernie Mitchell. To be honest, I only really know the name of Chevy Chase. Um, big fan of his work over the years, and every Christmas I watch National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Uh, it's just one of those traditions. But I like Chevy Chase. I think he's a a good all round guy. Been in some good films. Sadly, didn't do any kind of, I guess, massive films. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where you think he may have done more. But um, I like him. And if I've got that correct, I think he's one of those actors that came out of the Canadian com comedy scene. I don't know much about his past or where he was born, but I think he's one of those that, that, that they seem to come through Canada. There's a lot of like comedians that come out of Canada. 
I think it's because it had that kind of liberal kind of flair. Perhaps not so much today. I think things are a bit sketchy in Canada at the moment with um, certain kind of political movements which are censoring things, it seems. Certain things you can't say and you can't have that in comedy. If you're going to have comedians, you need to have the maximum freedom. Cartoon here by Don Madden. Just think, Miss Bridgewater, we're doing it exactly the same way that they did it 200 years ago. And this is the Colonial Valley Bicentennial Committee. Playboy Popure, People's Places, Objects and Interest or Amusement. So I'll let you take a look through there. Another cartoon. Uh, this is by B. Clyban. Times have changed, Grandpa. You can come out of the closet now. Indeed, again, quite relevant to today with the amount of discussion around kind of trans issues and uh, all that kind of thing. Um, not much left from here. You'll recognise that cartoon by Spilby, his style of artwork, and the caption is, all in all, then I think we've, we are agreed, we leave liquor alone and go for tea. After all, who's going to object to a few pennies taxation on tea? Old Spice, on the double promotion there each side, we've got some condom adverts, not too much else now, until the end of the magazine. Um, folks cartoon, bless you. No, sir. She told us she knew weeks ago. And that's us finished for this month. So let's take a look at what we've got in the next issue. The Wrath of God Israeli agents avenging the slaughter at Munich killed 12 terrorists. The 13 hit was a major blunder that laid Israel open to the Yom Kippur attack. A startling expose by David B. Tinin. Um, we've got Me and the Other Girls by Kathy Lowry. Rock and Roll Trivia Quiz Scott Morris. William Harrison has the makeup man. Uh, Sex in the Great Outdoors, a little pictorial. Uh, Brock Yates with Wave Goodbye, Behind the Wheel of the Porsche Turbo Carrera, rated by many as the hottest production car on the American road. And looking forward to that feature. I'm a big fan of the Porsche 911. Um, Playboy's Pro Football Preview, Anson Mount. And Michael Folks with America Seen Through Foreign Eyes. Little Annie Fanny returns as well. Um, we've had the cartoon of that in the back of the magazine for quite a while. There's been a little break in that and Olympics of the future. So we're done for this month. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you want updates and you're enjoying the videos. I'll see you also very soon, probably on around the 27th of February. See you soon.